This lesson is how to calculate the molar mass. Your first step uh, is once you get the chemical formula to list all of the elements in the formula. Second step is to write down the atomic mass of each element. The atomic masses can be found on the periodic table. Those are the numbers that have the decimals. Please write down all the decimals that are provided on the periodic table to ensure that you have the most accurate number you can have. Third step is to take each of those atomic masses and multiply by the number of atoms of that element in the chemical formula. The fourth step then is to add those totals together and then make sure you round the correct number of significant figures and the units that go with the number are grams per mole. And let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is for about as simple as a compound as we can get. We have potassium fluoride. Your first step is just to list the elements that are in that formula. In this case, just the potassium and the fluorine. We go to the periodic table and we can look up our atomic masses. The atomic mass of potassium is 39.10. The atomic mass of fluorine is 19.00. And it's important to include those zeros, include all the decimals you can. Now we multiply each of those by the number of times it shows up in the formula. In the formula, there are no subscripts, so each of those elements is assumed to have just one. So we multiply the potassium atomic mass by one and the fluorine's atomic mass by one. Now we have those numbers, and we can add them together and add the units of grams per mole. In this case, we had four significant figures for our atomic mass of the potassium. The ones in this case is just exactly one atom of each in the formula, so those are exact numbers. So our significant fig figures will be limited to how many decimal places we wrote down for the atomic masses. In this case, both of those numbers, um, for both the atomic masses, I should say, have four significant figures. Once we multiply them, we have four. Then we add them together, and now that we're adding, we have to look at what column of accuracy we have, and both of those numbers are good out to the hundredths place, out to two decimal places, so our final answer can be rounded to just, and be left at the, just those two significant figures. Now let's take another uh, look at another example where we have some subscripts involved. Uh, this is for ethanol, and our first step again is to list out our elements then we need to look up our atomic masses for those elements. And again, these come from the periodic table. Make sure you include all your decimal places from the periodic table. Um, now we have to look at the formula and determine how many of each element um, is represented in the formula, how many atoms of each. So we look at the carbon as a subscript of two. That means there are two atoms of carbon, and so we multiply our atomic mass by two. The hydrogen is a little trickier because we have hydrogen showing up with a subscript of five, but we also have another hydrogen listed there with no subscript. And again, if it has no subscript, it's assumed to be just one. So in this case, we have five hydrogens listed plus another one hydrogen. So we have a total of six hydrogens. So we multiply the six times the atomic mass of hydrogen to find its contribution to the molar mass. The oxygen uh, has no subscript, and there's only one, so we're assuming it's one. And now that we have those multiplied out, we can add those numbers together, add the units of grams per mole, and now we need to look and check our significant figures. The carbon has, the atomic mass has five significant figures, so once we've multiplied it by exactly two carbon atoms, we find that we have a number with five significant figures, good out to three decimal places. The hydrogen, once we multiply it, is, is good out to four decimal places. The oxygen, however, is only good out to two decimal places, so in the end, once we've added together, we need to round to two decimal places, and so this final answer should be 46.07 grams per mole. We'll go through one more example, this one a little bit more complicated. This time we have the ionic compound calcium phosphate, and this time we have something with a polyatomic ion with, that is within parentheses that we're going to have to deal with. But our first step remains the same, to just list the individual elements that are present in the compound, in this case calcium, 
phosphorus and oxygen. Our second step is still the same. We have to look up the atomic masses on the periodic table. Our third step is to determine how many of each atom we have represented in the formula. The calcium, of course, is just three. It gets to be a little bit trickier with the phosphorus because this time the phosphorus is part of a polyatomic ion inside the parentheses. So when we say we have PO4, that's basically saying that we have one phosphorus atom and four oxygen atoms. And having that inside the parentheses says we're going to have two of those polyatomic ions. In a way, it's like saying that one of these packages contains one phosphorus and four oxygens, and we have two packages. So if we have two packages contain one phosphorus each, we have two phosphorus. Each package contains four oxygens, and we have two packages. We have the two times four or eight oxygen atoms. And now we can add those numbers together. And we find that we have 310.18 grams per mole. And again, we check to see our significant figures. In the calcium, we had four significant figures for the atomic mass times exactly three atoms. Even though we calculated it 120.24, and we're going to use all those numbers, it, that number really should only have four significant figures. So it's really only really accurate out to the tenths place. And likewise, the oxygen is also only good to the tenths place. So in the end, we need to round our final answer to the tenths place, which in this case is 310.2 grams per mole.